Today we will be discussing the 7th unit of your English textbook which is titled as Nation and Diversity. So here let us first understand what are they going to speak in this lesson. So nation, nation refers to any of the country or a state which is bounded by a certain geographical area. For example, India is a nation. Okay, South America is a nation. Okay, in this manner, nation is an area which is bounded by certain geographical boundaries. Then what is the meaning of diversity? As I earlier told you, diversity means variety. Okay, so today we will be discussing how, you know, uh, various types of cultures, religions, people and, the, and their allied experiences in this lesson. So under this unit, the first lesson is my childhood. Okay, so who, whose childhood? Who is the reference to this pronoun used here, my? So let us first begin to understand about the author of the title lesson and then we will be learning in detail about the entire lesson. Like what is the content in this chapter. So the author of this lesson is Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. Okay, I guess this name is really very much familiar to all of you. Let us proceed knowing more about him. Okay, so as you all know that his full name was Dr. Aul Pakir Jainulabdin. Abdul Kalam. So A, P and J means this Abul Pakir Jainul Abdin Abdul Kalam. He was born on 15th October 1931 in place called Rameshwara which was also earlier called as Island Town of Madras. Okay. So he was born in Rameshwara which is in present day Tamil Nadu. Then he was Responsible for evolution of ISRO's launch vehicle satellites. So children, as you all basically know that he was a scientist, okay, and he was also a very good teacher as well as a student, okay. So he was also responsible for evolution of ISRO's launch vehicle satellites. So especially he designed or was responsible for operationalization of PSLV satellites. So what are these PSLV satellites? PSLV the full form indicates Polar Satellite Launch Vehicles. Okay, so he was the one, who, the person behind the operationalization and development of these Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle satellites. Okay, next. Along with this, he also developed, along with this, he also developed Agni and Prithvi missiles. Okay, so, so far we have been seen that APJ Abdul Kalam's full name was Abul Pakir Janulabdin Abdul Kalam. He was born in 15th October 1931 in place called Rameshwaram which is in present day Tamil Nadu. He was responsible for evolution of ISRO's launch vehicle satellites which are in that specially PSLV satellites, polar satellite launch vehicles and then he was also the person who has contributed in the development of Agni and Prithvi missiles. Okay, now let us see his contribution towards literature. His literary works included four books, I guess almost they are famous in the entire nation. Each there would be at least two or three people in each family would have got the experience of reading these books. Okay. So let us know the names of the book. The first one being Wings of Fire. Second one being My Journey. The third one being India 2020 A Vision for New Millennium. And the last one being Ignited Minds. Unleashing Power within India. So these were the four books which were written by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Wings of Fire, My Journey, India 2020, A Vision for New Millennium, Ignited Minds, Unleashing Power within India. Okay. So through these books, he, had, he was able to convey all his ideas to each and every reader of the nation. And then along with this, let us see his, uh, you know, uh, the awards what he has received, the honoraries what he has received. Okay. So let us see his awards and felicitations. So Dr. Kalam was honored and received his doctorate from across 30 universities of the nation. Along with this, he was awarded 
Padma Bhushan in the year 1981. He was awarded Padma Vibhushan in the year 1990. And he was also honored with the highest civilian award of India that is Bharat Ratna in the year 1997. And top of all these things, he was also the 11th president of India. So I hope all these details about the author are clear to you. Aval Pakir Janal Abdin Abdul Kalam, born on 15th October 1931 in Rameshwaram. He was responsible for the evolution of Israel's polar satellite launch vehicles. Along with this, he also contributed in development of Agni and Prithvi missiles. He wrote all these four books, Wings of Fire, My Journey, India 2020 and Ignited Minds. And he was also honored and received his honoraries and doctorates from across 30 universities. He received Padma Bhushan Award, Padma Vibhushan in 1990 and Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian uh, award of the India in 1997 and he also was the 11th president of India. I guess you all are perfectly aware of this. Now let us begin with the lesson. So the lesson is titled as My Childhood. So the lesson begins where author or Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam begins with the introduction of his parents and himself. Okay, let us begin with the uh, topic now. So the first line or the opening of the paragraph is, I was born in a middle class family in the town of Rameshwaram, in an island town of Rameshwaram, which is in present day Tamil Nadu or in the erstwhile Madras. As you all know, Tamil Nadu was before designated as, earlier designated as Madras. So the opening sentence says that he was born in a middle class family in Rameshwaram in Madras. Now, he introduces his father and mother to us in the first paragraph itself. So, his father's name was Jainuladdin and mother's name was Ashiyama. So, Jainuladdin and Ashiyama. So, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam was the child born to these dynamic parents. Now, let us see what more introduction or what more things Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam lets us know about his mother and father. So Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam says that his father was neither possessing much formal education, neither having much formal education nor wealth. Okay. And he also adds to it that his mother, Ashiyama, she was so generous and simple enough and through her generosity and simplicity, she used to feed most of the people. Okay. He added a sentence that almost along with our family members, they used to be most of the outsiders having food with us. Okay. So this indicates how generous and how concerned was his mother towards the people or the society. Okay. Having meals with the family. Okay, so this is what Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam conveys to us through the first paragraph of your lesson. Now entering into the second paragraph, let us see what the author wants to convey. So in the second paragraph, author says that I was one of the children to this handsome parents. Okay, so let us see what was the physic of Dr. A.P.J. Kalam when he was, you know, young or small you can say. So he was a short boy with distinguished looks. He was a short boy with distinguished looks. Okay. And then he said that they all together lived in their ancestral house. Ancestral here indicates the property which is gained through the earlier generations. Okay. Ancestral indicates the earlier generations. So they used to live in their ancestral house. So this ancestral house was a large pakka house which was made up of brick and limestone. Okay. And this was a joint family with all his brothers, sisters, his uh, father, his cousins, his uncles, aunts living together. Okay. And then coming to the next point here, the author describes that his home, his ancestral house was situated on the mosque street of Rameshwaram. Here he also adds about his father. He says that his austere father, 
Here the word austere indicates strict. Okay. Here the word austere indicates strict in attitude. So here Dr. Kalam says that his austere father just avoided the unusual or inessential luxuries. He did not give his children the unusual luxuries what in today's generation our parents are giving us. You ask for bike, your parents buy it for you. You ask for cycle, they buy it for you. You ask for bike, they buy it for you. But here his father with strict attitude just avoided all the inessential luxuries. This doesn't mean that he did not provide them the basic necessities. He gave all the materials, all the basic necessities to his own children. But he just avoided the inessential luxuries. Okay, so Dr. Kalam concludes this paragraph, second paragraph by saying that my father or my childhood was really a material one and an emotional one. So I have shared very good bonding with my brothers and sisters and my parents have taken proper care of providing the necessities which I was in need of. So this is how my childhood was one of the best childhoods. So through this he concludes the second paragraph. Let us see what author conveys us in the third and fourth paragraphs. In third paragraph, author here talks that Second World War broke in the year 1939 and children during the Second World War, there was a high demand for tamarind seeds. Most of us use this tamarind seeds for playing, right? So there was a high demand for these tamarind seeds in the market and Dr. A.P.J. Kalam could not understand at that point of time that what was the reason that this tamarind seeds demand has rose in the market. But let me tell you for your kind information that tamarind seeds were used to create or to generate fuel for the vehicles during that time. Okay and along with this it was also used for some other purposes as well. And Dr. Kalam was the one who used to collect these tamarind seeds when he was uh, you know very young or small he used to collect these tamarind seeds and he used to sell them in the provisional stores. Okay, so he collected tamarind seeds and used to sell them in provisional stores. And those people in return used to give him money and successfully he could earn some around 1 ana. 1 ana is 1 by 4th part of a rupee. Okay, now this was what Dr. APJ Kala describes. He never understood why, what was the reason behind the outbreak of Second World War. But he got to know the, about the details of World War I through his brother-in-law. He understood the details of World War I. And who gave him these details about World War I? His brother-in-law, Jalaluddin, told him about the consequences or the results of outbreak of World War I. And during this uh, when the World War II was going on, APJ Kala used to watch news and in the news channel which is which was titled as Dinamani, a famous new channel of Tamil Nadu indeed. So in this Dinamani, he got to know the headlines which also referred about World War I and then he could understand that his brother-in-law gave him the apt details about the World War I. So this is how since his childhood, he was so curious about the happenings around the world. So children, it is really one of the best qualities that we should possess. We all should have the habit of knowing what are the things going on around us. So please have the habit of watching the news which will really turn you into a responsible citizen ahead. Okay, so along with this, let us see what the author wants to convey in the fourth paragraph of this topic. Okay. Here, continuing the third paragraph, author says that our area, that is Rameshwaram, was little isolated from the entire country. As I told you, it was an island town of Madras, so it was isolated from the rest of the country. Okay, that's the reason it was not much affected from by the World War II. Okay, but this could not last for a long time. India, during that time, was under British colony as you all knew that. So India have to join some allied forces. Okay. India joined some allied forces and then India has to also give its own contribution in the war. And during that time what was observed in Rameshwaram was there was a train which has or which had its halt in Rameshwaram. 
but that halt was suspended. That train was not asked to have a stop in Rameshwaram. A kind of state of emergency was declared in the country as India also was one of the participants or you know allied forces in the war due to some of the other pressure. And then this train was halted. The, the you know the stop of the train was you know suspended and the train used to just pass the station but never stopped over there. And his you know brothers that is one of his cousins named Samsuddhi. So now you may get confused. Ma'am, what is the connection between the halt of the train and then Kalam and Samsuddhi? So just let me know, uh, make you understand that Samsuddhi, who was Kalam's cousin, he was doing the job of distribution of newspapers. Okay, he used to collect the newspapers early in the morning from the railway station and all these newspapers used to reach Rameshwaram to, through this train whose halt was suspended. And now also Samshuddin used to collect the newspapers but the only change was he has to catch the newspapers which were thrown from that particular train to the station. Now it was very difficult for Samshuddin to manage alone catching all the newspaper bundles. So he needed somebody to help him. And the one to help him was none other than APJ Kalam. APJ Kalam helped his cousin in catching the newspapers from the train, from the moving train. Okay. And then they distributed the newspapers in their town. Okay. This is how APJ Kalam could earn his first earnings with the help of his cousin Samsuddin. So this is what APJ Kalam discusses with us in the third paragraph. He discusses about the outbreak of World War II and he discusses how Jal uh, Jalaluddin explains him about the results of World War I and the same he could also notice in the news headlines of Dinamani. Okay and then he says that Rameshwaram as it was not the central in the country as it was isolated aside there were no much effects but the train halt was suspended over there and the train never stopped and his cousin Samsuddin and APJ Kalam has to catch the newspapers and distribute it all over the town. So this is how Kalam could earn his first earnings, could earn his earnings with the help of his cousin Samsuddin. Okay, now let us see what Dr. Kalam conveys us within the fourth paragraph. So Kalam says that every child in fourth paragraph the author conveys that every child on this earth is born with certain inherited characteristics. So what does the author mean by this statement? So the author means that on this earth, the children, when the children are born, they definitely carry certain qualities of their parents, of their grandparents and they come onto the earth. Along with this, when we are brought up in our families, we just tend to adopt the culture of our family. We are our habits, our nature, the way we speak, the way we receive the people, it also depends on the family, you know, uh, condition, family environment. So here, author adds that every child's childhood or you know, the childhood of the children who live in a joint family is also affected or is also, you know, nurtured by certain socio-economic and emotional environment. As I told you in the reference to paragraph 2 that APJ Kalam's father was very strict and he did not allow for inessential luxuries. This could teach those children the value of the things. So this is how the family also matters when nurturing the childhood of a child. So this is how certain socio-economic emotional environment is also responsible for the childhood of a student or of a child. Now, he says, Dr. Kalam says that the main four qualities which I personally have inherited from my parents and my brothers and sisters are as follows. He says that from my father and my mother, I inherited honesty and self-discipline. Whereas from my brothers, and sisters as it was a very big family you can call it as a large family he inherited kindness and goodness okay so this is how author here highlights the inherited qualities from his parents from his brothers and sisters these qualities also made him what he was for the entire nation now let us see how the author introduces his friends in his in the next paragraph that is the fifth paragraph so author had three best friends the first one named as ramananda shastri and then arvindan and 
Siva Prakasan. So children, let me tell you something that all these three students were from orthodox Brahmin families. They were really very good friends of our author or our former president Dr. A.P.J. Kalam. And then Dr. Ramananda Shastri, when he grew up, he was he was actually, you know, Dr. Ramananda Shastri was son of Lakshmana Shastri, who was the high priest of Rameshwaram temple. But Ramananda Shastri never had this kind of, you know, unorthodox feelings towards his friend. He, they were really good, very, very good in nature. And this is how Ramananda Shastri, when he grew up, he took charge of priest from his father and he took charge of the entire temple. Coming to Aravindan, when he grew up, he took the business of serving the transport facilities to the pilgrims who come to visit Rameshwaram. Along with this, he has also had a friend named Siva Prakasan who after growing up has taken or he has become the catering contractor of South Indian Railways. So this is how all his three friends were into very good fields. Now let us see what the author describes about his childhood in the story. During the annual Sita Ram Kalyanam, which used to happen in Rameshwaram, actually author's parents, that is Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam's parents, used to design a special board with a platform to carry the idols of Lord Rama, Sita and Lakshmana from the temple, to carry idols of Lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the center of the pond, which was popularly known as Rama Tirtha. And it was very much near to the house. So, not a, though APJ Kala was from, you know, a Muslim family, but the stories of Ramayana as well as life of prophet used to be his bedtime stories. Okay, this is how author has described us about his friends, about the three friends he had, that is Ramananda Sastri, Aravindan and Siv Prakasan. And he also said that during the Sita Ram Kalyanam ceremony, marriage ceremony, his family used to design a boat with a special platform to carry the idols of Lord from the temple to the Ramatirtha, that is the marriage site which was in the center of the pond. Along with this, he also highlights that the stories from Ramayana as well as from the life of Prophet used to be the bedtime stories for him. And let us see what next the author talks to us. Here, the author shares an experience with us. So let us begin with the same. When author was in 5th standard and he was in school, he used to sit in the front row with his best friend Ramananda Sastri. So, when author was in 5th standard, he used to sit in front row with Ramananda Sastri. And let me tell you, he also used to wear a cap to designate that he was from Muslim community. And then, he had one new teacher coming to his classroom. And that new teacher could not digest that Ramananda Sastri, who was an orthodox Hindu, Hindu uh, from a Hindu Brahmin family and a Muslim boy sitting together. And then the teacher told uh, APJ Kalam to get up and take the last seat as the teacher was, you know, uh, creating a kind of communal disturbance in the classroom. And then Kalam did not speak any word but just got up and went to sit in the last row. But he could see that his friend Ramananda Sastri was into tears when uh, Dr. Kalam got up and went into the, uh, I mean, went to the last bench. And then this created an impression on Dr. APJ Kalam. Once the school was finished, both the children, that is Ramananda Shastri and APJ Kalam, went to Lakshmana Shastri, that is father of Ramananda Shastri, and told what happened in the school. And then Lakshmana Shastri could not tolerate this and just called upon the new teacher. And explained him thus, new being a teacher, he or she is not liable to spread poison of inequality or intolerance among the innocent students. Okay, and then his father, Ramananda Shastri's father, Lakshmana Shastri, asked, and then Ramananda Shastri asked the teacher to either apologize or to leave the island. Okay, this is how this created a you know a, a great impact on the minds of ABJ Kalam, and he just bear in mind that this is quietly wrong where the people are intolerant towards the other religion. So this is how it created a sense of impact on Dr. APJ Kalam. Along with this, he also shares one more experience with us that is, he had one of his science teachers 
and his name was Subramanya Iyer. Okay, so he was observant teacher and he used to observe Kalam and he used to say that Kalam, I want you to study very hard and become one of the highest personalities like the people of the cities. I want to be you to be at par with them. And these words always used to mesmerize Dr. Kalam. And once this teacher, Subramani Ayer, invited Kalam for lunch to his home. And Kalam went. But what was he, uh, what happened in his home was, his wife was not at all ready to serve Kalam as he was from a Muslim family. And his wife was conservative. What is the meaning of conservative here? Here conservative means that the wife was not ready to accept the changes which are happening in the society and that she refused that I will not serve this boy and but this teacher that is Subramanya Iyer he was so calm and he was not anxious about that and then he himself served that boy with his own hands and was sitting there till Kalam had his lunch and his wife from the kitchen was observing both of them. She also might have observed the way, the distinguished way in which Kalam was having his food. Kalam had his food in a very systematic manner. He wiped the floor after eating. So all this indicated that he also inherited certain qualities from his Hindu Brahmin friends. And then, then uh, you know, uh, Subramani Ayo, he sent, uh, while, you know, giving a bidding of farewell to uh, Kalam, he said that Kalam, you are again invited next week for a dinner in my to my family and then Kalam was little hesitant and he was like no sir I will not be coming but then he again the teacher assured Kalam that when we are changing the system such reactions are quite common we have to be positive about it and then next week Kalam turned up for dinner to his house but to his surprise he observed that sir's wife Subramanya Ayer sir's wife she herself took Kalam to the kitchen, she made him comfortable in the kitchen and she herself served him. This also created a great impact in the minds of Dr. APJ Kalam. He could never forget his teacher for the change he brought in the minds of the society. He, This teacher always tried to break the barriers in the society, the barriers which are creating inequality. So this also mesmerized Kalam to have a greater impact on the people. Along with this, let us see what more Kalam would like to add to his childhood. So all this, Kalam was carrying a rich experience uh, throughout this and then the time came that is the year 1947 and as you all know that India got independence in this year. Okay and erstwhile we had our national you know leader or the father of the nation Mahatma Gandhiji who declared that now it is high, high time it's our time. Now the Indians will create their own India. Okay and then after this Kalam have observed that the people had innate optimism. What does the word optimism mean here? Optimism is nothing but it is a kind of positive attitude among the people that now something good is going to happen to us. So this is what Kalam has observed throughout his surroundings. And once he completed his, uh, you know, uh, the primary education or maybe his secondary schooling, he felt that now he has to leave Rameshwaram and he has to shift himself to the headquarters of Ramantapuram. And then he went to his father to seek permission and told him that father, I think it is the time for me to leave Rameshwaram and go for the higher studies or in headquarters that is in Ramantapuram. And his father responded in a well matured manner and told him that yes, I know that you have to go away to grow. Okay, such a beautiful phrase his father has told him that I know that you have to go away to grow. Don't you think the seagull flies alone in the sky without a nest? So even you are free to fly. You are free to explore yourself. But his mother was little hesitant. Okay, and she was you know having a kind of hesitation in sending the child. And then his father Jainulabdin quoted Khalil Gibran there. Okay, and told to his mother that your children are not your children. Okay, they have come through you but not from you. You should give them time to explore themselves. You should, they are the children of the life 
Okay, they have to carry themselves a long way. And this is how he convinced his mother to send APJ Kalam for his higher education. And children, here we have the, you know, here we can witness or we have witnessed the pinnacle of success this particular student or this particular child from a very small background has raised it to. So all of us, we also have, we do have certain barriers in our families, in the society, but we need to change our thinking. We need to respond to all the barriers which come uh, in front of us. We need to face all the challenges, but should never change the aim or the goal that we possess in life. So with this, I conclude the lesson. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you one and thank you all.